Now we'd like to continue, inshallah, and end, inshallah, with this topic of perfecting the Muslim family. The next point, inshallah ta'ala, is something that uh, we hope that the brothers, the men, they listen to with three ears, inshallah. And that issue is Mu'awana Ahlul Ahl al Bayt fi Amil al Bayt. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ta'awanu ala al birri wa taqwa. And the men use this ayah a lot. Help one another in acts of righteousness and piety. So now we want to talk about Mu'awana. Mu'awana Ahl al Bayt. Helping your wife with the housework. Helping your wife with the affairs of the house. Because many men, they think that it is beneath them. Many men, they think that it is something that is lowly or undermines their status and their rank as a man to sweep or to vacuum or to wash dishes. I see the brothers looking around already. <laughs> to wash dishes or to cook a meal or to do anything that's going to assist their wives. And we like to tell you that the Messenger of Allah's wife, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, كَانَ يُخِيطُ وَيُخَيِّطُ ثَوْبَهُ وَيَخْسِفُ نَعْلَهُ وَيَعْمَلُ مَا يَعْمَلُ الرِّجَالُ فِي بُيُوتِهِمْ That the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to sew his own clothes and mend his own shoes and do whatever other work men do in their homes. This hadith is collected by Imam Ahmed and his Musnad and Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahumullah jami'an. He collects it in his Sahih Al-Jami' and it's number 4927. Also Aisha, our mother, radiallahu ta'ala anha, lamma su'ilat ma kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya'malu fi baytihi fa'ajabat bima shahadat who be nafsiha wa fi riwaya kana basharan min al basher. Aisha, our mother, radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she was asked about the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what he used to do in his house, her response described what she herself had seen. What she herself has seen. She said, in another narration, he was like any other human being. كَانَ يَكُونُ فِي مِهْنَةِ أَهْلِهِ That he would clean his clothes. يُنْقِي ثَوْبَهُ وَيَحْلِبُ شَاتَهُ وَيَخْدِمُ نَفْسَهُ That he would milk his own cows. He would clean his own clothes. He would serve himself. So in addition to sewing his own clothes, in addition to sewing his own clothes, in addition to mending his own shoes, doing the work that other men used to do, he used to also milk his own cows, he used to also clean his own clothes, and he used to also serve himself. How many men will be right there in front of the kitchen, and their wives will be in another room, maybe in the basement or the attic, and they'll sit there and wait for their wives to get up to go to the kitchen, which may be two feet or four feet or six feet away or ten feet away or two or three rooms away. They'll wait for their wives sitting right there while they're reading the newspaper or whatever. And they'll wait for their wives to go into the kitchen and pull out something from the kitchen like a glass to get a glass of water. We know that it is the duty of the wife to serve her husband. But how many times would a man get reward if he was one who did some of those things for his wife? And there are some benefits. And so right now, what we're going to do is, we're going to stop talking and we're going to ask some questions. We're going to ask you men right now, what are some of the benefits of doing those things for your wife, of helping her around the house? By raising the hand, some brothers are going to answer the question now. Yes, what's one benefit? 
It will develop love between the husband and the wife, the spouses. Make your wife less tired. Make your wife less tired. Right. Give her a break in common words. Give her a break. Is there anything else? I will get out. I know you have something. Since you're a professional husband. Come on. Huh? It will make the difficulties easy on her by assisting her. Anything else? Set a good example for the children. That's right. MashaAllah. Anything else? And you're not married, right? No? MashaAllah. An unmarried brother with an answer like that. Anything else? Nothing else? That's it, brothers? La ilaha illallah. Ahmed said, she'll respect you more. She'll respect you more, yes. You'll get a lot of rewards. Now we're getting closer to the answer that I thought everyone's going to give. There's one main answer, the number one answer you could have, one number one benefit that you left out. What is it? It's from the sunnah. You'll be implementing, you'll be emulating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You'll be following his example. Anything else? There's something that's very, very, very beneficial from this. Anything else? That's right. It's also a sadaqah. It's also a sadaqah. Anything else? MashaAllah. Are you married? These non-married brothers, how, how old are you? 14. And how old are you? Huh? Sixteen years old, answering those questions like that. You old guys should be ashamed of yourselves. Letting these young guys answer these questions like that. Fourteen and sixteen. Say that again, brother. Mashallah. It shows that you're humble and you're not arrogant. Because arrogance is one of the four pillars of kufr. Arrogance and pride is one of the four pillars of kufr. Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah, rahimahu Allah ta'ala, he said, arkanu al-kufr arba'ah. That the pillars of kufr, because you know we have five pillars for Islam. He said the pillars of kufr are four. And one of them is arrogance, pride. So if the man sweeps the floor without his wife asking to help, without his wife asking to help, if he washes not one dish, if he washes the dishes, all of them, says, sweetheart, you know, honey pie, uh, sugar roti, uh, you know, my, my, my honey chicken tandoori, or, you know, my banana cake, and all those words that we use for our wives. You say, you just sit down for a minute, and I'm going to do these things. I'm going to do all of these things that you normally do every day, all right? How many of you brothers, don't raise your hand and embarrass yourselves though, okay? How many of you brothers, raise the hand that's in your heart. How many of you married brothers in the past five years have changed a pamper or a diaper? Just raise the hand that's in your heart. Wow, no hands came up. Look at that. No hands. I can't look in your hearts, but, you know. Okay, how many brothers are married? One, two, three, four, five. All right. When was the last time, you have children? When was the last time you pat, you you changed the uh, pamper or the diaper? He's thinking real hard. He can't even think. He can't even remember. In the beginning, you used to do it, like 25 years ago, right? <laughs> huh? He's only six months old, okay? You're married too, right? When was the last time you changed the pamper or diaper? No, not well. Yet, yeah, tell us, just give us an answer. We want to hear numbers, like three days ago, five days ago, this morning. You change it in spirit. In Islam, we have words and spirit. Are you married? I mean, when was the last time you changed the diaper or pamper? One year ago. La hawla wa la illa Anyone else? No one else? Now the brothers are afraid to raise their hand to say they're married. <laughs> Within the last month. That's not too bad. Anybody else? You married. I saw your hand up. When was the last time you changed the diaper or a pamper? 
When you, and it falls down, you pull it back up. I like that one. That's pretty good. That doesn't answer the question of changing the family. When was the last time you, yes, a few days ago, mashallah, I can see it in your face that you're one of those good dads. Mashallah, barakallahu feekum. When was the last time one of you married brothers washed a dish? Not the dishes, plural, a dish, your own dish that you ate from. When was the last time? Today? No, no, no. I'm talking about from what your wife made, not from the, what your uncle cooked. Your wife made it and you washed your own dish. How many of you brothers know where the kitchen is? Huh? You know where the kitchen is? The kitchen, what is that? I remember that word. So, the ulama of Islam, let me give you some of the benefits that they've given. Actually, you've given them. They said we will be following the example of the Prophet. We will be, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will be helping our wives and would make us feel more humble and not arrogant. That's what some of the ulama said. Some men, you find them, they demand the food from their wives immediately. Give me my food. They walk in the door. They don't even say, salamu alaikum. They don't hug their wives. They don't do anything. They just, where's my food? Right? So, what we're going to do now in an attempt to make the Muslim family more perfect, to perfect the Muslim family, we want all of the married brothers sitting, sitting here and all of the married brothers who are listening to my voice until Yom al Qiyamah on this CD. This week, inshallah, we want to get a commitment. We want to get a commitment. We want a pamper crew from the brothers. We want some brothers here to agree to changing the pamper one time, at least. One, the, the other group are going to uh, cook some food, just one meal for their wives. Another group is going to wash the dishes. All, not just the dishes, because you know washing the dishes means washing the dishes, the pots and pans, cleaning the stove, cleaning up the table, all of that. All right? Do I have a commitment from you brothers one time in a seven-day period? Anybody want to agree? I put my hand up right now. Anybody? That's very good. Now, are there any brothers here who don't want to do this? Your wives can't see you because they have the partition back there. So are there any brothers that you want to raise your hand and don't want to do this? That don't want to get this reward from Allah and don't want to give sadaqa and don't want to emulate the Prophet and don't want to uh, be a terrorist against arrogance and pride and be more humble? Any brothers here? No? Are you married? Yes. Are you married? No? Okay. May Allah give you a righteous way. Amen. Amen. Okay. The next thing we want to talk about, and actually this is the last thing we wanted to talk about, inshallah, in perfecting the Muslim family, is... Actually, I think it was something that we mentioned yesterday that we wanted to elaborate upon. And that is reevaluating the woman's work outside the home. Because some people came yesterday and they were mentioning some things and uh, they were good points. They were good points. And that's one of the questions we neglected to ask the Sheikh. Uh, looking, going back and looking at the the adverse effects, the negative aspects of the women working outside the home. These are some of them. Number one, what often happens, what often happens of things that are forbidden in Islam, such as mixing with men, getting to know them, being alone with them, wearing perfume for them, starting to show one's adornment to strangers, and of course all these things can ultimately lead to immoral conduct. That's one of the things that is quite possible, quite possible to occur if a woman is subjected to being outside the home working. Another thing is not giving the husband his rights. Not giving the husband his rights. Neglecting the house. Not giving the children their proper rights, as we mentioned yesterday, and that's a very important point. 
also undermining the feeling in some women's minds that the husband has the qawama, that the husband has the status of protector and maintainer. Because if we look at the situation of the women, if you take the case of a woman whose qualifications are equal to her husband, they're equal to her husband, or even higher, and there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing wrong with that within itself, or who works and earns more than he does, then she's going to be less humble, and she's going to be less submissive. In many cases, not in all cases, but in many cases, if you find a woman who earns more than her husband, and she's bringing home the halal bacon, right? If she's doing that, and he's not, or he's bringing, he's earning less than her, you'll find her not being more submissive. You'll find her being less submissive. If you find a situation in a perfect Muslim family where the man pays for everything, you will find, brothers, that the majority of the times, in just uh, except where the woman, there's something very odd has happened, but the majority of the times, if your wife can look at her ibaya, her overhead ibaya, or her jilbab, or her shoes, or the laces in her shoes, or the toothpaste, or a napkin, if she can look at anything that's in that house, whether she's wearing it or not, and she can say that there's not one thing, not even a toothpick, that was purchased by me, it was all purchased by my husband, I guarantee you, you will have a woman that you will never have any problems with. I guarantee you, she will be a woman that is submissive. But once she, inshallah, once she starts spending from her own wealth on anything, specifically and especially herself and her children, your children, you're going to see a change in her fitrah. Her fitrah. Because her fitrah is one of submissiveness. That's the way Allah created the women. Allah says in his book, the male is not like the female. In general, the woman is a submissive creature. They are not the, the obstinate, rebellious creatures that some men may think. This is a serious problem. When you don't take care of your wife, you'll find her being more unruly. You'll find her being more non-submissive. But when you are taking care of business, as we say, then you'll find her being a very submissive creature, and she will jump through hoops for you. She will do anything for you, because that's the way Allah created her. Also, one of the things that is an adverse, that has an adverse effect on the women working, is physical exhaustion and psychological and nervous pressure, which doesn't befit the nature of a woman. The nature of the woman is that they should be in a situation where they can be calm and can be tranquil in the home so that they can take the pressure off of you when you come from outside dealing with all that fitna. So when you come in the house, you come into the house to gain tranquility and peace. Can you imagine if she has to deal with the hustle and bustle of the world outside of the home just like you? You both walk into the house. You're grumbling, looking at each other, you know, like two pit bulls. Wallahu musta'an. So these are some adverse effects that result from the women working. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his tawfiq. So I told Ahmed that we didn't have a lot more to do. That's the end of that. What we're going to do now, inshallah, we're going to uh, 